ربما يعني المستقبل ان شاء الله ربما يكون عندنا روم فاسيلتيز ودار يعني حيكون في تعاون يعني اكبر يعني يهمنا جدا يعني الارتقاء بمستوى نقل المعرفه وتطوير القدرات والدار وهذه وهذه وظيفه الجامعه من اخرى شكرا للدكتور رضا ولحضراتكم يعني وتواجدكم ومساهم في هذا هذا النشاط اللي اتمنى له التوفيق و يعني احنا تاكيد يعني امكانيات الجامعه تصرفكم مستقبلا يعني اذا ما احتجتوا اي ما احتجتوا اي احنا احنا مستعدين وخصوصا لما يعني بدينا نلاحظوا في هذا ال يعني النشاط المستمر يعني دائما فيه فعاليات وفيه نشاط في طرابلس وفي بنغازي وفي اكثر من مكان هذا يسعدنا يعني هذا يدل على جديه ال جديه ال بالتوفيق ان شاء الله. طبعا جمعيه القلب الليبيه احدى جمعيات الرائده في 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 ليبيا وتعتبر من من انجح الجمعيات الحمد لله يعني مش مش شكر في 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 جمعيه لكن تعتبر من جمعيات رائدة وتفوز أكثر من مرة يعني من تبع المركز المركز البحث العلمي إن هي أفضل جمعية في السنوات العديدة يعني من نشاطها العلمي يعني عادة عندنا نشاط كبير يعني نشاط تعني يعني continuous medical education للأطباء في جمعية الطبية وعندنا اوتوب ورك شوبس عاده تريننج هاند اون تريننج يعني باستمرار كان في ورك شوب مستمره طبعا جمعيه القلب الليبيه بدات في تقريبا في 2002 اشهرت كان عدد الاعضاء بتاعها حوالي 40 45 عضو حاليا جمعيه القلب الليبيه تضم عدد الفعل حوالي 400 عضو 400 الى 500 كلهم جميع اعضاء جمعيه القلب الليبيه هم اعضاء في جمعيه القلب الاوروبيه دافعين لهم الاشتراكات بتاعهم عندهم بطاقات وارقام في جمعيه القلب الاوروبيه عندنا اكسس كبير مع جمعيه القلب الاوروبيه يعني جمعيه القلب الليبيه عضو فعال في جمعيه القلب احنا بنشارك حتى في انتخابات انتخابات رئاسه جمعيه القلب الاوروبيه عندنا حوالي ثلاثة او اربع اصوات نشاركوا بهم في في الانتخاب بتاع الجمعيه عندنا داخليا في معظم الجايد لاينز وال 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 اللي هم يطلعوا من الجمعيه حتى هي كل كل جايد لاينز مثلا الجايد لاينز بتاع التريتمنت اوف هارت فيلر حيطلع يعني صار تغيير الجايد لاينز بتاع هارت فيلر طلعت في 21 عاده كل اربع سنين يطلع من كل خمس سنين يطلع جايد لاينز لكن صار في تطور كبير في التريتمنت بتاع الهارت فيلر بس بالاس جي اس تي 2 انهبيتر صار طلع فيبدو يدير ريفيجن للجايد لاينز فجميع القلبيه حتكون موجوده ضمن الورك جروبس بتاع بتاع الجايد لاينز هذين ومعظم الجايد لاينز كل جايد لاينز طبعا الجمعيه تتكون من من وركينج جروبس حوالي عندنا 10 وركينج جروبس مثلا عندنا ورك جروب اوف هارت فيلير ورك جروب اوف كورونا هارت ديزيز ورك جروب اوف انترفنشن نيرسنج ورك جروب فكل ورك جروب عاده بدير في نشاط او اثنين في السنه فمعظم السنه عندنا نشاطات مستمره. نعول كثيرا على على الشباب بتاع وعندنا طبعا كل سنه عندنا مؤتمر مؤتمر الجمعيه اللي هو سنويا تقريبا حيكون كل سنه وحيكون في ديسمبر القادم. مؤتمر الجمعيه يحضروا فيه حوالي 500 شخص من ليبيا من الناس الليبيين ما شاء الله عليهم اللي بيشتغلوا في الخارج تعميم دعم كبير للجمعيه وتطور الجمعيه وفي ناس طبعا ضيوف من الجمعيات المجاوره والجمعيات العالميه فحيكون فيه في شغل كبير ومعولين فعلا على مساعده الليمو يعني الجامعه الليبية الدولية للعلوم الطبية معولين عليها كثيرا في في مساعدتنا في الحدث اللي حيكون في بنغازي في في 29 ديسمبر 2023 شغل كبير حيكون فيه 
معولين كثيرا مع خاصة رئيس اللجنة التحضيرية حكون دكتور زكي التمر هو عضو الإدارة ومعولين على الشباب كل ما نقولوا له مرات نجيبوا شركة ترن الإيفنت يقول لا ما في شركة الشباب بتاعنا خاصة بتاع الدولية جاهزين وفعلا احنا في اليوم العالمي لل للقلب اللي فات والبرنامج بتاع الهايبر تنشن يعني درنا شهر كامل يعني برنامج للهايبر تنشن في ليبيا كلها ف اعتداء وطلبوا الجمعيه اللي كانوا فعلا في الموعد وكانوا دعائم اساسيين لجمعيه القلب الليبيه ممكن حببناهم حتى في الكارديولوجي ممكن معظمهم حيشتغلوا في الكارديولوجي الصعب فشكرا جزيلا على الاستضافه ويسعدنا جدا ان نحن جزء من 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 العمل العلمي اللي تقوم به جمعيه القلب الليبيه احنا امس كنا في في يوم علمي طويل والجماعه اليوم في الصبح من الساعه 8 ونص كانوا في ورك شوب هاند اون في الكهف في الكهف ذا الجماعه هم طلبوا ست اشخاص انهم يعلموهم كان في زحمه حطينا لهم 16 شخص تقريبا سكرنا على 17 وسكرنا عليهم الباب ومنهم ما نقدروش اللي زعلان اكثر من راني فهم اكيد قايل شويه لكن العطاء يعطوا باستمرار بدون اي سعداء سعداء بدون اي اجر او ان شاء الله اجركم حاصل وتعبين طبعا هم جايين في اجازات من كندا ومن امريكا عند الدكتور عبد الدكتور عبد الغني ونوارة طبعا هذا اسيد بروفيسور في ماك ماستر يونيفرستي في اونتاريو في في كندا فيماس انترفنشن كاردولوجيست يشتغل في الحالات الصعبه جدا في الانترفنشن وعندنا الدكتور حمزه رايس حمزه يشتغل في 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 اليو اس اي حتى هو انترفنشن كاردولوجيست فهم جايين لكن شوفوا العطاء كيف الناس يعني مش كلها بالصدق يعني يعني فيلينج انت انك تدرب ناس وتعلم ناس هذا فيلينج ما بلاش حدود عاده فمرحبتين بهم مره اخرى ونحن سعداء ان نكونوا في في الجامعه نبدو في الـ في الـ في الـ في البرزنتيشن دكتور عبد الغني بن مبارك يعني عن بوستن توبيك بوست مايوكارديا انفاركشن او بيشن مانجمنت واحد يخش مايوكارديا انفاركشن كيبتوني سندروم بعد ما يطلع شنو عادة شنو المفروض شنو الحاجات اللي اللي المفروض نقول لها لما يطلع بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله حنبدا ان شاء الله المحاضره اليوم بوست مايوكارديا انفاركشن او بيشن مانجمنت هذه من اهم التوبكس في الكارديولوجي احنا عاده نركز على اشياء في الاكيوت ام اي والاكيوت مانجمنت اوف كيسز لكن حتى ستيبل بيشنتس وي هاف تو فولو ذيم تو افويد اني اذر كارديك ايفنتس ان ذا فيوتشر فمهم جدا ان ان نعالج البيشنتس في الاكيوت كونديشن ستيبل ستيت از لونج از بوسيبل لان معظم الكارديك كيسز ذي هاف دي كومبنسيشن ذي كم باك فور وذ انذر ايفنت وذ انذر اتاك وذ انذر اكسسيفيشن اوف هارت فيلير اور ريذميا وات ايفر فاحنا سبيسيفيك اليوم حنتكلموا على البوست ام اي اوت بيشنت مانجمنت فحنبدا بكيس ذيس از 51 يير اولد ميل هو كيم وذ تشيست بين فور 45 مينتس نو بريفيس سيميلر تشيست بين ابيسودز Uh, he is hypertensive and has dyslipidemia. He has family history of heart disease, including his father who had a mind in his 60s. He's a smoker. Typical patient that we see here in our practice. His physical examination was uh, relatively unremarkable. Chest X-ray was unremarkable. And uh, let's see his, uh, his uh, ECG shows this uh, change, which is, the, as you know, the uh, anterior ST elevation here, and typically this patient went to the uh, to the cath lab and uh, underwent primary PCI and PCI to the LED and with one stent. So the patient's stable now in CCU. He, he received all the management that we typically use, including aspirin, dual antiplatelet therapy, beta blockers, statins, ACE inhibitors, and a uh, short period of Um, heparin, nitro as needed. And then now the patient is stable actually to go home. Um, so we have to think about before discharging the patient or even if we see the patient at the clinic, what we should do. 
and what are the risks, what uh, is the management plan for this patient to keep the patient out of the hospital as long as possible to reduce the events or spread the duration of the second event because we know this patient might end up with another heart attack in the future, hopefully not, but we have to do our best to prevent that. And the way to do it is to know the, the problem that this MI caused that patient to move from a stable patient to another stage. That means he has mortality risk of up to 10% per year. This patient has 5% mortality every year. And this patient, 85% of those 5% can happen suddenly. And the patient can die, 50% of this 5% may die in the first three months and may die within the three, three weeks. So this is a scary number, so we have not to take it lightly. We have to do our best to prevent uh, any future events. And we treat patients based on the risk. So there are patients who have low risk, the same patient, but low risk or high risk or intermediate risk. We have to focus on the low risk and high risk to avoid confusion. Low risk patients, for example, this patient is stable now, asymptomatic, he had an LED stent, he has normal function, no arrhythmia, he's on good medications. That's considered to be low risk in comparison to another patient who is high risk, who has still recurrent angina after his MI, he has multivessel disease, he may need or uh, need multiple stents or bypass surgery, he has LV dysfunction, he has dysarrhythmia. So this patient, exactly the same age, gender, etc., but their disease burden is higher, and those patients have to be aggressively treated, although both, pa both patients we ha need to be treated with the guidelines management, but we have to know that this patient is at higher risk, so we have to be more aggressive with this patient. And we have to look for complications. MI has complications early or late, so we have not to wait for the complication to happen, rather than to uh, address those complications even before they happen. Those complications including heart failure, post uh, pericarditis, ischemia, mechanical complications, like ventricular uh, septal rupture, papillary muscle rupture, LV thrombus, rhythms. So we have to keep those in mind <coughs> and we look for them and try to prevent them from happening. Um, and the disease burden is, is, is very important. So we have to know that, for example, if the patient um, has uh, activity that causes ischemia, so that's a bad sign, so we have to address that. Review the coronary inter uh, intervention and the coronary anatomy. So before the patient goes home or even in the clinic, we always look back and see what type of stents, what is the extent of the disease. Did they cover all the disease that the patient has? For example, if the patient has disease in the RCA or circumflex, are they moderate or severe? Uh, do they need staged PCI or not? Do they need any other intervention? <clears throat> and uh, we should always ask the patient, look for any other uh, symptoms like angina symptoms or any change in their status. So we look, uh, we do another echo, we do investigations to make sure that uh, we address those things. So any patient who comes now after discharge, comes after three, four weeks in the clinic, we have to take another history. We shouldn't depend on the previous uh, notes and previous history only. We have to review all the notes, obviously, uh, but we should take uh, more full history, physical, ECG, we do another echo to compare laboratory investigation, especially lipid profile, and we look for other tar targets like hemoglobin A1C and LDL, etc. Uh, optional chest X-ray, but um, we need to look for uh, especially other non-invasive testing like stress test to, to check the functional capacity, uh, especially if the ejection fraction is low, we have to review the echo to make sure that has improved. And very important to optimize medical therapy, which is we now those patients must likely go on a list of medications, but those medications most of the time are low doses or not the correct dose for the patient. And we should look for the side effects. So optimize the medications and try to look for early side effects and try to avoid them by reducing the medications dose or switch it to another medication that has less side effects. And uh, we should keep in mind the coronary artery disease prevention cascade we know primary prevention, secondary prevention, tertiary prevention. We have to make sure that we check the patient's uh, status to try to bring them back from the tertiary prevention status to the secondary prevention status. And uh, that's because we know this patient has CAD and already managed and stented, but we try to make sure that to prevent other events and bring them to the more stable status. So when we... we um, 
see the patients in the, in the clinic or the office or uh, anywhere outside the hospital, uh, we should always keep in mind the checklist. Uh, so to do initial assessment, risk assessment, either low or high risk patient, define the individual CVD risks based on Framingham risk score or WHO risk score, pharmacotherapy uh, assessment, make sure they are on good medications, like this patient has to be on aspirin uh, indefinitely, has to be on dual antiplatelet therapy for at least one year, and uh, statins, beta blockers, and ACE inhibitors indefinitely, uh, if no contraindications. We should always consider lifestyle modifications and ed educate the patients about lifestyle modifications and interventions to do that especially smoking cessation education, diet education, weight reduction, and exercise education, and psychosocial evaluation, because those patients have a trauma. It's a form of trauma, this condition. So they get uh, into depression and anxiety, and social support is very important for these patients. Um, and again, so we, we, we check the um, things post -mile. so it's a called uh, prevention plan, you check their blood pressure, lipids, uh, make sure diabetes is controlled, diet weight reduction, etc. And that's to be addressed uh, all, all the time. Now for the pharmacotherapy, we have to always ask the patient to bring their list of medications and, uh, and uh, if possible, to even bring the bottles. And that's to check for compliance because most of our patients unfortunately are not compliant 20% of our patients are not compliant, either completely or partially. Complete and compliance, they stop all their medications. It happens. Or partial, that means they take some of them or take, take some of them intermittently. Or they, uh, <clears throat> they don't take them on time. So please make sure that you check for the compliance to take the right dose on time, all the time. That's very important and uh, all, the, all the right medications, make sure that they, they have the correct list of medications. And modification of risk factors, there are modifiable risk factors that we can do something about, like smoking, hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol. But also we should tell the patient about that the risk is high because they have other non-modifiable risk factors. That's for the patient to know, so they, they be more aggressive about their disease. And also the, non, uh, the modifiable uh, risk facts also include physical, to do physical activity, diet, etc. They have to do their part to reduce the disease burden in the future. One of them is smoking cessation. We have to uh, <coughs> be aggressive with smoking cessation model, uh, which is uh, called A5 uh, step process, which is ask the patient about smoking, advice, assess, and assist, and arrange uh, smoking. Uh, cessation uh, plan. So we have to ask the patient every time about the tobacco, to <clears throat> they are smoking or not, males or females, and advise them to quit. You have to start. It's our duty to tell them to stop smoking. We shouldn't shy and say it's okay and uh, no, it's not okay. You have to stop smoking. Uh, that's my advice. And they have to, de they have to know that and they keep it in their mind. We, do we, don't, uh, we don't recommend uh, anything apart from smoking uh, cessation. Even if they want to use the vapors and other stuff, we tell them always stop smoking. That's, that's our duty as a physician to tell the patient to stop smoking. And if you need help, we can uh, help you by assessing the smoking uh, type of smoking. And uh, if you, they want nicotine or something, they can use it. There are medications to help uh, the patient to stop smoking. We can try to do that. And we always arrange for follow-up because we need to know they stopped smoking or in the process of sub or, or smoking cessation by arranging another follow-up to tell them if they are successful or not. It takes usually months and multiple trials. Medications, statins by far are uh, mainstay for uh, therapy for coronary artery disease, a class one indication with level of evidence A, and uh, it's uh, about 20% relative risk reduction, including mortality, stroke, revascularization, and MI. And the target LDL for those patients should be less than 1.8 millimole per liter, uh, multiplied by 39 if you want to go to uh, the milligram per deciliter. And uh, try to avoid uh, niacin and fibrate as first line. Uh, uh, omega-3 fatty acids are okay to be used, but class two level of evidence B, but not first line. Statins are first line. Aspirin is for class one indication, which is level of evidence A with a significant mortality benefit, especially in acute MI, up to 40, 10 to 40% uh, relative risk reduction. 
and it's lifelong, lifelong commitment unless there are other certain conditions that we, uh, we uh, can stop aspirin. For example, if they are on anticoagulation for AFib. And uh, aspirin has a strong evidence a um, long time ago from the ISIS-2 trial compared to uh, um, th streptokinase thrombolysis that showed actually aspirin is more or less similar to, uh, to streptokinase in terms of their mortality benefit. But when they added aspirin to streptokinase, there's even more synergistic effect from both. And this is another study to show that aspirin compared to placebo has up to almost 40% relative risk reduction with p-value statistically significant. And uh, the other antiplatelet therapy, P2Y12 inhibitor, uh, receptor blocker, which is clavidogrel, and uh, it can be used <clears throat> up to 12 months, then can be stopped. It's class one level of evidence P. Uh, sometimes used long term if uh, indicated in certain conditions. <coughs> And there's evidence from CREDO trials showing clavidogrel compared to placebo has statistically significant uh, all um, relative risk reduction in MACE and uh, all cause mortality in comparison to placebo. Uh, when they added aspirin, similar to streptokinase, aspirin and clavidogrel are very effective with a synergistic effect from both based on the result of the CURE trial. And P uh, value is statistically significant. Uh, Prasigril is another, another um, uh, antiplatelet therapy. We don't use it that commonly, but you have to know from Triton Timmy 38 trial that's very effective. The loading dose 60 milligrams, maintenance dose 10 milligrams daily, but has risk of bleeding, especially in old age and patients with a stroke. Uh, Ticagrelor, uh, based on the plateau trial, is very effective and actually even better than clavidogrel with the dose, loading dose 180 milligrams and maintenance dose 90 milligrams twice daily for a year after BCI, unless otherwise indicated. And uh, from the Plato trial, it's a famous trial that compared head-to-head head clavidogrel versus tachygrelor with statistically significant p-value in favor of tachygrelor with the mortality benefit overall. And that's why it's class one indication. It's, it's superior to clavidogrel but it's more expensive. So if it's not available or uh, patients can't afford, you can use still clavidogrel. But if it's available, affordable, then it's first line. Always you have to weigh the risk of bleeding versus risk of ischemia. And weigh always risk of ischemia weighs the bleeding risk. We shouldn't say uh, patients can't take this therapy because they, they may bleed. No, we have to give them and prevent bleeding. So that's the key. We have to give them antiplatelet therapy and prevent bleeding. For example, the most common cause of bleeding is GI bleeding, so we have to give them PBI to reduce that risk. And uh, beta blockers also a uh, class one indication, especially in the first three years, especially if the patient has LV dysfunction and heart failure. So that's uh, very important with relative uh, risk reduction up to 36%. And the potential, potential uh, benefit uh, and uh, benefits of uh, beta blockers, it's a long list which is really people underestimate the beneficial effect of beta blockers, including the uh, decreased oxygen demand due to reduction in heart rate, blood pressure and contractility, and decreased risk of ventricular arrhythmia, decreased risk of sudden death, mortality reduction, relative risk reduction up to 30 to 40%. Bradycardia it can cause bradycardia, which is uh, benign bradycardia uh, because uh, the coronary perfusion is in during diastole. So we need that bradycardia to keep the heart rate around 50 to 60. So that increases the coronary perfusion because coronary perfusion occurs during diastole. And bradycardia prolongs diastole. <clears throat> also in, uh, in LV dysfunction, it's very important. It's class one indication because it reduces the remodeling and improves the LV function. ACE inhibitors also very effective. It's class one indication, especially in heart failure, <coughs> post MI and LV dysfunction. Class one indication <coughs> with level of evidence A and uh, mortality reduction, relative risk reduction up to 27%, and reasonable to be used in even low risk patients. Class one, uh, class two indication. Uh, so uh, other medications we can use, it depends on the patient's condition, like uh, RBs, aldos uh, uh, aldosterone blockers, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, and trust 2 et cetera. Those, that, they, are, they select the patients after acute MI, not specifically for CID, but if there's CID with heart failure, then we have to consider those. Now, always you have a checklist again. We know the dose of the medication. For example, aspirin standard dose, take a fixed doses, but for 
lipid profile, lipid lowering medications that based on the target, based on the target LDL, 1.8 millimole per liter. And uh, we give the high dose at the beginning to reduce inflammation. After that, we give them a moderate dose. And that dose typically for Atorva statin about 40 and the Rizova statin about 20 milligrams. And we reduce the dose to, go to get the target, target LDL and also to reduce the risk of side effects because the higher the dose of uh, statins, the higher the risk of muscle uh, pain and patients can't stop uh, those medications because of that or can cause liver damage. So we reduce or give them the minimum dose we need as long as we achieve the target. ACE inhibitors, it's the opposite. We have to escalate the dose uh, at the highest dose possible as long as tolerated, uh, keeping in mind the potential side effects like hyperkalemia and hypotension and renal dysfunction, etc. Otherwise, it should be given as, uh, I preferably I use moderate dose also just to minimize the side effects. Beta blockers also to achieve uh, heart rate around 60 as long as blood pressure can tolerate that, as long as no contraindications. And targets, this is a very important slide to know the target uh, for our patients. They have to get a target blood pressure based on the new evidence 130 over 80, all of our patients, especially if they're diabetic with renal failure. The old target is 140 over 90. We shouldn't, uh, we preferably not to use that anymore. But the uh, American and, Ca and Canadian uh, guidelines have changed it to 130 over 80 as the max. That's the maximum blood pressure. And uh, proteinuria, 125 over 75, but we use this just to avoid confusion, remember 130 over 80. Heart rate target around 60, so in escalate beta blockers as tolerated. LDL 1.8 multiply, if you want to milligrams, multiply by 39. And hemoglobin A1C uh, less than six. The old guidelines say seven, now they change it to six. And that's uh, to reduce the next event. <clears throat> avoid non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, avoid uh, antiarrhythmic medications and, and if it's unnecessary. Avoid phosphodiesterase inhibitors if unnecessary, uh, especially, uh, definitely avoid it with nitro. Don't use it with nitro because of the risk of profound hypotension and sudden death. And uh, again, checklist always have to be, have to have a checklist, especially even the nurses. They should know the checklist for those patients uh, for medications and other medications to avoid uh, missing them because it's not uncommon to see a patient who is not on beta blockers or statins or, or ACE inhibitor, or uh, even sometimes the second uh, antibiotic therapy after discharge. So we have to always check for it. And uh, cardiac rehabilitation is very important. That is evidence that there is relative risk reduction of mortality up to 25% from cardiac rehab if it's done correctly, perfectly. And the uh, guidelines say the goal is 30 minutes moderate intensity with a target heart rate 60, uh, 40 to 60 maximum heart rate, but we shouldn't tell that the patient because most of our patients, they don't know, they check their heart rate. So we tell them anything that brings sweat, just do it most of the week, especially five times a week. Five times a week, 30 minutes moderate intensity is more than enough. Definitely avoid high intensity because potentially it can be harmful. And if the patient is old, and can't do things, so consider um, exercise tests to know their, uh, their capacity level, the level of functional capacity, if possible. Uh, psychosocial evaluation because patients uh, can end up with depression, anxiety, etc. So try to help them and assist them and ask them for that. So that will help the compliance, helps with the uh, patient uh, don't lose the uh, track and follow-ups, so it's very important to uh, assist their uh, psychosocial. And even if needed, you can may send them for a psychiatry or uh, psychology if needed, which is rare, but it happens. So in conclusion, evaluate patients post MI for complications, optimize medical therapy to achieve the target uh, levels that we spoke about, encourage patients to do lifestyle changes and risk factors modification. Reassess and uh, uh, rule out medication side effects, secondary prevention, cardiac rehab, and always arrange for another follow up and cardiac testing as needed. And thank you very much. So, I, I will just uh, give a very brief uh, review about coronary artery surgery and a little bit about the health system, Libya health system at the same time. So really, uh, this is data from uh, the WHO showing that number one cause of death in Libya is, is cardiovascular disease. 
Ischemic heart disease alone is responsible for about 97 for every 100,000 Libyan people. Yani if you multiply that uh, number, which is about 100, by seven, will give you 7,000 deaths in Libya because of ischemic heart disease. So very briefly, I think uh, coronary arteries is happening because of blockage of the coronary arteries due to the position of uh, lipid and uh, associated inflammatory reaction causing occlusion of the artery. And if this artery is occluded because it's an end artery system, the myocardium will die. It has no blood supply. And actually, you can identify this even before the heart attack happened, before the, it caused patient death by either patient symptoms, uh, you've heard it, or by doing an angiogram or CT angiogram and other investigations. And this picture shows you the left main coronary artery, which is split into a very important LAD, or left anterior descending coronary artery, that supplies 70% of the myocardium. So this artery is very important. And this lesion is called the widow maker, because anyone with this, disease, with this severe stenosis, if not treated, uh, it can cause immediate death. The other branch called circumflex coronary artery and has either OM1 or OM2 branches. Then you have the right coronary artery, <clears throat> which end up in a very important posterior descending coronary artery to the inferior surface of the heart. Yeah. If you have a low burden coronary artery disease, low risk like Dr. Abu Nuwara have pointed out, the recent data from ischemia trial published in 1998, I think, sorry, in the year 2018, uh, or 19, I can't remember the exact date, show that there's not much difference between conservative management or medical therapy as opposed to intervention either by PCI or surgery. Unfortunately, there's no comparison or there's no um, subgroup analysis comparing surgery versus PCI in this study. And I think if it was, maybe it would have been very much in favor of surgery. Maybe. Well, I think, <laughs> but if you have high burden disease, uh, like if you have symptomatic despite maximum guideline directed medical therapy, if you have a left main stem stenosis, if you have proximal LED disease, if you have impaired LV, if you're diabetic or have end stage kidney failure, then you, are, you have only one or two options really, either surgery or PCI. We'll come to that in a minute. What, uh, surgery includes uh, taking one artery which is sitting behind the breastbone, we have one, the left one on the right called internal mammary artery, or the supposed to be the good name or the scientific name is internal, internal thoracic artery. You mobilize it from behind the uh, sternum and you connect it to the uh, anterior, to, to the LAD or the left anterior descending coronary artery. And you may take a vein or other conduits if you like to uh, support as a second graft. <coughs> Uh, we have even uh, gone into the uh, extreme where we used the left mammary artery to the LAD. Then we took the right mammary artery also, connected to the radial artery, and then took the other end of the radial artery to the aorta. We published this in the annals. I think it was in the year 2007 while I was working in Saudi Arabia. This is, uh, unfortunately, the radial artery doesn't do very well. It goes into vasoconstriction it did, uh, and eventually give us what we call string sign. And we, it hasn't been very, um, we hope this will give you a, like a double inflow, inflow to the graft from the aorta and inflow from the native right mammary. But it's, uh, the radar artery let us down very badly in that. <clears throat> but really the, uh, opera the first limit LED was performed by this Russian surgeon called Kulusov uh, back in 1964. And the procedure was made popular by uh, this Argentinian surgeon working at the Cleveland Clinic uh, in, in the States. Um, and he used Lima to LAD and vein grafts to the, uh, to the, other, to the other target vessels. The Lima to LAD proved to be a very successful uh, procedure because if you take the patency rate at 20 years, after surgery, it's almost as high as 90%. Whether you have uh, diabetes or not, and is 
very important for diabetics because if you don't, you end up with vein grafts only. The patency rate of the vein graft by 20 years is less than 40%. And the remaining 40% of non-occluded vein grafts will have disease in them. <clears throat> We said that uh, in addition to the vein grafts, because of the limo was so good, we thought maybe use the right memory as well, either taking the right memory to the LAD and taking the left memory to uh, one of the branches or on the left side, or uh, as it is here, or adding another graft either uh, from the radial artery, often left radial artery, or even the uh, right gastroepiploic artery, which is the artery shown here, as another arterial conduit. And the technique is uh, often uh, simple in many ways, but we use seven oproline to connect the artery, the, this in, in this case, left internal mammary artery, to the uh, arteriotomy of the LAD. And we even devised a technique would allow you to buttress the toe of the anastomosis, because this is a very weak, the weakest point of the anastomosis is here. So if you buttress it with its own uh, um, tissue, you can have a safer anastomosis, especially in small coronary arteries. And we had that in Asian uh, annals of thoracic surgery back uh, about more than 20 years ago, I think. Operation is a complex one. It requires a patient going on cardiac bypass, where you put an aortic cannula, you can see it here in the left hand of the surgeon, and you take, uh, you, then you take the blood from the right side of the heart, either cava or the right atrium. You give it to the heart-lung machine, oxygenate it, and pump it back through this aortic cannula, thereby bypassing the heart and the lung. And that's why we call it cardiopulmonary bypass machine. And you can cool the patient down because if you have hypothermia, you don't require too much oxygen uh, when the heart is cross-clamped or deprived of blood supply. This allows you to work in a still heart which is a very easy, make it easy for you to finish your, a good quality anastomosis. However, uh, in the last 20 odd years, we have, people have devised something called off-pump coronary artery surgery, where you stabilize the heart by doing a suction to the apex and mobilize the heart and putting a, a stabilizer pushes to stop the heart moving too much while the heart's beating without heart lung machine here. And then you anastomose your uh, graft, either limo or vein, to the necessary arteries. It was a very popular thing about 20 years ago. Uh, however, the popularity seemed to have died down from about 30% uh, of all operations down to nearly 20% by the year 2019. And the reason for that is <coughs> Uh, not just the cost, because off-pump is very expensive. You if you have to use a stabilizer and you have to use a suction uh, uh, starfish, we call it, for every, uh, for every patient, and the overall cost can be as high as $3,000 um, as compared to $1,000 for on-pump surgery, which this is only the consumables in the operating theater, not the whole operation. But also because of the survival. The three-year survival for patients who have uh, on-pump surgery uh, is uh, more than 95% as compared to uh, about 91 or 92% if you do op-cap or off-pump. So this is the mortality rate uh, after three years if you had op-cap or off-pump surgery, which is about 8.8% as compared to 4.5% if you had um, on-pump bypass. And this really, uh, even the 10-year survival is the same, is just uh, uh, better for, for if you have on-pump surgery and has been seen in many uh, studies, except a few, I think, but the, the majority of trials have shown the um, advantage of having on-pump coronary artery bypass graft as compared to off-pump. But you cannot talk about long-term survival without comparing PCI to surgery. And this uh, an analysis, um, systematic review, 
of uh, many studies that compared surgery to PCI, and they have shown that the five-year survival is far superior for surgery as compared to stents. That includes some non-bare metal stents, which considered to be all technology. Um, and that's particularly true for diabetic patients. You can see here, diabetics uh, have uh, the, the cumulative mortality by five years in diabetics who have PCIs 15% as compared to 10% if they had uh, open heart surgery with uh, Lima to AD. And also apply to patients with multivessel disease. Okay, th that was in many ways an old data, although the paper was published in 2018. But this is a more recent publication, I think uh, last year, uh, at the New England Journal of Medicine look, uh, called the FAME 3 trial, comparing uh, surgery versus PCI if guided by something called uh, FFR, which is fraction flow reserve. So if you use that tool that will tell you which, if this lesion is worth stenting or worth sending for surgery, you could see uh, the outcome for, for surgery, again, was superior to PCI. And this is the, um, I think, the complement for primary endpoints, which include death or uh, acute myocardial infarction or readmission or uh, reintervention at uh, one year, uh, the risk was considerably higher of PCI as compared to patients who had CABG. That paper was attended by an editorial uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, titled Cabbage versus PCI, End of Debate. And here it says that the FAME 3, 3 trial bolsters, you know, supports the role of cabbage as the, the uh, benchmark for comparing any other intervention or procedure uh, for patients with coronary artery disease. There are uh, criteria that favor PCI still and others that favor uh, surgery, and these are listed here. But I think I'll take you back a little bit. Uh, sorry, the two important facts really we have to keep in mind when you compare PCI to surgery is that the risk of stroke in patients who have open heart surgery uh, is 1.1 by the end of one year, as compared to less than half that if you had PCI. But that effect doesn't last. In the long term, there's no difference between PCI and surgery, okay? The other thing is the cost. I think the cost for surgery is slightly higher. <clears throat> Initial cost is higher than PCI, but not much higher. And that lasts, even the annual costs continue to be uh, above the expected cost for, for PCI. <clears throat> but if I take you back to the 7,000 <clears throat> 7,000 deaths in Libya because of coronary artery disease. What are we doing about that in Libya? The estimated number of coronary artery uh, angioplasty and PCI and cabbage for every 7 million in average in Europe is about 18,000 interventions, either surgery or PCI. In Croatia, which is closer to Libya in terms of income uh, uh, per GDP, is 22,000, slightly higher than the average European. In Libya, if you do this, you should have at least 2,450 interventions between PCI and surgery. And unfortunately, this number is not anywhere close to what we're doing now. If you look here, this is the average European, and this is the Croatian, and, Euro and the German is even much higher. If you calculate the number of cases we're doing in Libya, it's somewhere here, is less than 50, 400,000 population. Thank you. Uh, I would like to first thank the Libyan Cardiac Society for giving me the opportunity to be here. And of course, thank the Jamia uh, al-Libya al-Dawliya, Dr. Rida al-Aqli, Dr. Mohammed, Dr. Abd al-Ghani, Dr. Ali. Yani shukran ala sadafutkum liya. And I'm very happy to be here. Inshallah, tistafidu minni, inshallah. Allah bin Kalam ala early and late complications of uh, myocardial infarction. I don't have any disclosures. 
learning objectives انا بتكلم شوي على الابيديميولوجي شوي statistics شوي يعني ال incidence the prevalence of this disease and why it's important to know about this and how to recognize the disease how to diagnose it and how to treat it and treatment is going to be broken into medical and surgical or mechanical support procedural treatment uh, which we're going to go briefly through that علاش علاش نتكلموا على الموضوع هذا why this is so important لو جي نرجعوا للزمان نرجع لسنه 1980 الكومبليكيشن ريت المورتاليتي ريت فروم مايوكارديال انفاركشن كانت فيري هاي يعني توصل لقريب ل 100% بعدين مع الانتروداكشن اوف فيبرينوليتيك ثيرابي في في التسعينات وبعدين الانتروداكشن اوف برايمري بي سي اي المورتاليتي has significantly reduced well incidence of complications for, from myocardial infarction also went down وبعدين الشيء اللي يعني مفاجئ جدا كان وكان يعني very good يعني thing to happen ان هالinterventions هادو طبعا كانوا big discoveries وكانوا حاجات يكلفوا فلوس هلبا يعني medications you're producing a new medication and, and bringing up a new procedure that needs equipment الحاجة المفاجئة اللي كانت في 2015 around 2015 أنا introduction of system care making an organized systems uh, that addresses um, uh, uh, taking care of STEMI patients within a certain timeline وكذلك coordination between the teams involved in taking care of the patients من ال ER, من ال cardiologists, من ال ICU so everything is done readily to the patients هذا كان uh, also have uh, also had a good impact on the incidence of complications and the mortality. لكن السؤال هو يعني even despite all those things, the mortality is still very high. على شن السبب؟ السبب أن ال 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 population is aging. الناس بدو يعيشوا أكثر. يعني في في يعني it's a good thing. أنا في ال primary prevention or secondary prevention can في more emphasis. لكن في نفس الوقت patients are living longer. المرضى هادو اللي living longer they are more likely to have complications وطبعا في more diagnosis we're getting better in doing in diagnosing those patients we're getting better on echocardiography on CT and MRI so, and also on screening those patients for complications from like just physical exam and taking good history so we're getting better on doing that so diagnosis is busy incidence of those complications is getting uh, higher as well especially in specialized cardiac centers بالنسبة للتايملاين، the way I like to break down this big uh, diagram is أن uh, في early on the first two days عادة ال complications هما arrhythmias either fast or slow. يما عندك ventricular arrhythmias و atrial fibrillation، يما عندك heart block و bradycardia. في ال 3 to 7 days هما وين يصيروا mechanical complications. mechanical complications حنتكلموا عليهم، لكن هذا وين يصير mechanical complications. Later on, week four to seven, usually this is where you have autoimmune complications, specifically talking about Dressler syndrome and pericarditis. Uh, the way I like to break down uh, uh, acute MI is this way. Mechanical complications, complications after STEMI, mechanical, electrical, and non-myocardial. بالنسبة لي non-myocardial, they're mainly pericardial and thromboembolic. بالنسبة لي The mechanical, uh, I like to divide them to unruptured. Unruptured myocardium, they, for LV failure, RV failure, LV aneurysm, ischemic mitral regurgitation, and dynamic flow obstruction. In terms of ruptured, uh, they include three main things. You have papillary muscle rupture, with septal rupture, you have VSD, ventricular septal rupture, and free wall rupture. نبدو فيهم بشوي بشوي على هيت كيسز. أول حالة هادي بنبدو فيها هي بيشنت جاي بـ inferior STEMI. الفيديوز I don't think they're gonna play. Oh, they're playing. ما شاء الله. بيشنت عندها inferior MI. As you can see in this picture here, ال RCA is occluded with thrombotic lesion in the RCA. Here, at the thrombotic occlusion of the RCA, في thrombus filling defect. وهنا ال procedure we're trying to open the RCA هذا ال wire هذا tip of the wire here فكان في success في opening the lesion وبعدين درنا PCI لكن 
once the patient uh, went to the table, uh, again, the finding had the echocardiogram. Lahad anna hal hada taban mitral valve, u hada aortic valve, u hada left ventricle. Left ventricle, out lahad left ventricle for short axis hada geometry of the left ventricle has changed. The inferior might cause severe hypokinesis of the uh, of the inferior wall of the left ventricle. So they're pulling, they're pulling the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve. The pulling had a sebab overriding the anterior leaflet. Maashit sakra al-baad. The mitral valve maashit sakra al-baad. Mahoush papillary muscle rupture. This is an ischemic mitral regurgitation. That is very important to know. And uh, very important to differentiate between this and the papillary muscle rupture. That's why echocardiogram is very important in this situation. For had a litishpofil alwan had who had a color flow doubler with blood uh, ejecting back into the left atrium, which is abnormal. Who had a tabal koanda effect, had significant mitral regurgitation. اللي صاير هنا يعني في to to depict it on a diagram أن عندك ال هذا ال normal left ventricle وهذا عندك ال ال papillary muscle two papillary muscles here and here you have the mitral valve the papillary muscles attached to the mitral valve as you all know through the cord tendine when you have significant myocardial infarction in this case inferior MI you will have shortening of the papillary muscle and the shortening of the papillary muscle will pull some of the cordy, and depending on the orientation of the cordy, and, and Dr. Rida al Akli, and he would be the expert to explain uh, the uh, anatomy of the cordy into the papillary muscle, into the papillary muscle and the mitral valve. But in general, th those are pulled back and tethered, and this leads to uh, the significant mitral regurgitation. In some situations, actually, the opposite happens. There is actually elongation of the infarcted papillary muscle and exaggerated contraction of the other. Can one get a mulse out of the gut? Now, this is the treatment of this case. The treatment is medical, mainly medical. Meaning, we need afterload reduction so the blood that is supposed to go to the aorta will get an easier pathway to go through. The easier pathway is the mitral valve. But if it goes to the easier pathway, you reduce the afterload نقص البلود بريشر مثلا تعطي فيزو دايليترز كاشيسلي باش انت الام ار ينقص وما عادش يرجع البلود ريتروجريد يمشي فورورد uh, طبعا الافتر اول ريدكشن هذا يمكن يكون اولسو باي ميكانيكال سبورت يوزنج بالون بامب اند يوزنج امبل الحاله الثانيه هذه 52 يير اولد بيشنت عنده ريسك فاكتورز كامينج وذ تشيست بين جاي بي فينتريكولار تاكيكارديا هذا انيشال اي سي جي Well, uh, well, ECG later on comes out of VTAC and has inferior MI. And what's special about the inferior MI is prominent QAs. Man, I go like that. I think I didn't push that the guy to help on the chest pain. Mish, 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 keep bad if he. So the coronary angiogram uh, is showing uh, totally occluded, chronically likely totally the RCA, wa uh, uh, occlusion of the circumflex. If he flow distal to it, so for had a kind of culprit lesion. Patient can unstable, impella was put in. As you can see here, had a bar on the heart pump, takhad blood from left ventricle in the ascending aorta, and the circumflex was reperfused with PCI. Alashan, the patient was unstable, a right heart cath was done. You guys missed a very good presentation of Dr. Abdul Ghani Eliom on the right heart cath. Inshallah, Maratani, I think you should follow. لكن كان اللي كان فيه significant um, uh, elevation in wedge pressure وكان فيه prominent V waves هذه هذه typical of severe mitral regurgitation لكن the absence of this doesn't exclude it just so you know uh, on echocardiogram this was a little bit different from the first case on echocardiogram هذا طبعا هذا هنا المitral valve I'm going to come back to the screen. This is the left ventricle, the left atrium. The left ventricle, left atrium, the mitral valve. Something weird. There is something weird in the mitral valve. It may be that there is a prolapse, a mild prolapse in the mitral valve, but it's unclear. The picture is not very clear. What makes you suspicious is when you put color doubler and you see this color flow going back into the, into the left atrium. You, what, what you need to do in this case, get more information.
يعني احنا مرات نقوله يعني crap in crap out if you don't if you have terrible information terrible data your decision is going to be terrible so you need to have good data good information to make a good decision ففي الحالة هذه what you need to do is to get it more information and in this case is a transesophageal echo transesophageal echo here this is the left ventricle aortic valve had a mitral valve شوفوا أن في significant mitral regurgitation anterior jet anterior directed jet لكن شفت شوف ال leaflet is flail the mitral valve leaflet is actually flail في rupture of the papillary muscle هذه هذا اللي شفتوا فيه هذا البافي thing هذا في at the tip this is a part of the papillary muscle فصار في rupture the papillary muscle وهذا ال هذا 2D picture so بعدين شفتوا the color the picture showing depicting the the anterior jet لما يكون عندك posterior papillary muscle rupture حيكون عندك anterior jet حتى the direction of the jet can help you define what's going on وبعدين هذا uh, some some 2D some 3D pictures هذا 3D pictures هنا هذا ال aortic valve هذا ال left atrial appendage هذا ال anterior leaflet of the mitral valve هذا posterior leaflet تعرف anterior اللي يعني جات ال aortic valve وهنا تلاحظوا هذيك ال papillary muscle كنا نشوفها هنا coming back and forth وجاي في النص this is a P2 prolapse prolapse of this second scallop of the posterior mitral leaflet طبعا هذه information as a cardiologist is essential information that the surgeon will need يعني لو انت ما عندكش information هذا surgeon بيقول لك باش انت بندير لك يعني you need good data to have a good decision for the patient to get a good surgery good treatment تمام ال papillary muscle rupture incidence is not common incidence is rare luckily 0.05 to 0.26 And if in 10 years I've seen only one one case, we can't hear the case. Yeah, can patient TTE very unclear, patient pulmonary edema, flash pulmonary edema not doing well, or by then a TTE showed the papillary muscle rupture. Hospital mortality is very high. It depends on the center, depends on the availability of a surgeon. It's also ila 40 percent. The posterior papillary muscle more common than the anterior papillary muscle. Yeah, a single blood supply. The posterior papillary muscle are the common common question for boards. The risk factors are, in general, similar for 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 all the mechanical complications, old age, female CKD, and late MI presentation. You know, as we said, with pulmonary edema, you expect that the mitral regurgitation will have a murmur, like you said. Some patients will not have a murmur, because there is rapid equalization of pressures across the left atrium and left ventricle. Basically, the left atrium and left ventricle have the same pressure. They have the same pressure. فا فا be aware of that. يمشي طبعا radiation axilla. TE is important. زي ما قلنا especially if the rupture is not complete, especially if it's a partial rupture. وال وال clue to diagnosis can can be helpful sometimes that the infarct size might not be very big. يعني ممكن يكون small infarct can cause this. مش شرط إنه يكون massive infarct. A treatment is emergent surgery. As soon as you suspect that, contact the surgeon and get more information. Meanwhile, at least for the surgeon and the rest of the surgical team to be ready to take the patient to the OR. The treatment, medical IV vasodilators. Tabani, if the patient is stable, the patient is hypotensive, you cannot give vasodilators. Pressors, inotropes, mechanical support. Long-term survival, if they have, if the, if detected early and they, ha they have a successful surgery, their long-term survival is good, is similar to uncomplicated MI. So that's why detecting and diagnosing those patients and um, immediate intervention is very important. Like in the مشكلة طبعا only 50 في survey the روها أو the retrospective study and only 58% of patients in one study got surgery. علشان هم عندهم comorbidities علشان very high risk علشان patient too unstable. فالف this is a challenging situation. هذا another patient. الفيديو ما يشتغلش هذا لكن هذا occluded venous graft to the PDA. Patient and the chronically occluded RCA, or venous graft to the PDA occluded. For نفس نفس ال الشيء كان patient كان عنده partial rupture of papillary muscle. For the the darula mitral clip. This is is not this is not standard of care treatment, but this was a salvage. The patient was very high risk for surgery. Unstable, multiple comorbidities. They go through the same process. They go through the same. You go through the femoral vein. You cross the the interatrial septum. And then the same process. They put it in the mitral valve. They put it in the mitral valve. They 
sad for regurgitation. In this case, uh, it, it needed one, two, three clips to, to uh, reduce the regurgitation from here, significant to minimal, minimal uh, regurgitation. Okay. I had another case, uh, 12 hours of oppressive chest pain and dyspnea, with pan systolic murmur at the apex, of uh, patient JB anterior STEMI on ECG. As you can see, this is RCA, angiogram. And on the left side, there is a, an occluded LAD. Well, echocardiogram showed this is the apical four chamber uh, of the heart. Had a left atrium, had a right atrium, had a right ventricle, had a left ventricle. Her name they didn't call her Dobler, who are about on a duplex assessment. We should be a take idea of the, the flow of the blood. For had a yani, the, the, the blood moves from this side to this side against the probe, you take different colors, which are different direction of the blood. For her name, if blood tala, I mean the left ventricle or right ventricle. For her, she had a ventricular septal rupture. If you have a patient, for example, young, it can be a ventricular septal defect. But here, ventricular septal rupture in the interior wall of my, especially if it's apical. And this is the LV gram, left ventricular gram, in the cath lab. It's about a catheter, we're from the radial artery or femoral artery into the aorta and into, across the aortic valve, showing contrasts crossing from the left ventricle to the right ventricle. Uh, you can you can detect that in an emergency even in the cath lab. <coughs> this is another example subcostal view. Now, of course, the علينا يعني مش الكارديولوجيس بس يدور في ultrasound. يعني حتى ال ER و intensivist و internist they can do limited ultrasound of the heart to detect emergent findings. When a subcostal view of the of the heart had the liver. Who had a color double flow from the left to the right ventricle. And, uh, ventricular septal rupture incidence is also not common. Uh, can at 2% now, it's lower. Risk factors are similar to papillary muscle rupture. The uh, onset is insidious. The يعني onset يعني is a little bit of a muscle rupture, acute pulmonary edema, or a little bit Incidence is a little bit. In serious, then in the road, fucker fee, they see overflow. Left ventricle, blood flow for left ventricle pressure are very high. Suddenly, all that pressure is going to the right ventricle and flooding the pulmonary circulation. Hakun fee pulmonary edema, like in a little bit more insidious. Then a mish, the left ventricle, papillary muscle rupture into the left atrium directly. It could a little bit indirect. So the onset is more insidious, like and still they can, uh, patients can present with hypotension and shock. The murmur is more likely to have murmur and more likely to have a thrill, you know, a palpable murmur. The ECG is a septum, it can be conduction abnormalities. If you have a right heart cath, it can be a step up in the oxygen saturation, so it's shunting. So when you come to the swan gans catheter, the right atrium or right ventricle, when you come to the PA, it can increase in the saturation from the oxygenated blood from the left ventricle into the right ventricle. Well, assessment of cardiac output should be with FIC. You have to ask Dr. Abdaghani to know what is FIC. Treatment. Treatment, delayed surgery. If the patient is stable, Delayed surgery is better. Dr. Rida, يعني if, if the tissue is friable, it's going to be very hard for Dr. Rida to fix it. So you need to stabilize the patient if possible and, and do surgery delayed. Uh, if the patient is in cardiogenic shock, you have to do emergent surgery. You have no option. The types of defect are basal more than apical. Well, basal is MR. ischemic MR, low inferior MI, basal, mitral regurgitation, RV dysfunction. So you have to keep this in mind as well. Treatment is after load reduction, mechanical support with the balloon pump, ECMO tandem heart. In the impella, had the one that you saw the problem is that when you put the pigtail in the left ventricle, you have to manipulation of the friable tissue and you can see a stroke. And the other thing is to decompression the left ventricle. 
والديكومبريشن هذا ممكن يسبب ريفرسال اوف ذا شانت ما عادش تبدا ليفت تو رايت شانت تبدا رايت تو ليفت شانت دور المريض نتاعك عليك يبدا هايبوكسيك ان اديشن تو ذا شوك ستيت فيو نيد تو بي فيري كيرفول اباوت ذات في سيرجيكال انترفينشن از ذا مين ستي انترفينشن لكن اذا كان البيشنت فيري هاي ريسك اذا كان هل اذا كان فيري هاي ريسك فور فور سيرجري والديفكت سمول وسنترال واوي فروم ذا فالف يعني في كرايتيريا معينه يو كان دو بيركوتينيوس انترفينشن البيركوتينيوس انترفينشن عباره عن فيمورال فين اكسس يو جو تو ذا رايت فينتريكل يو بوت يور واير اون ذا اسيندنج اورتا بعدين تاخذ ارتيريال اكسس يو سنير تاخذ تجبد الواير اللي وصلت الاسيندنج اورتا وتستخدم زل بريدج تستخدم زل زل جسر الجسر تدخل منه الديفايس نتاعك وزي ما زي ما في الصوره هنا هذا الديفايس هذا خش هنا من الفيمورال فين فيمورال فين هنا والديفايس ديبلويمنت اوف ذا ديفايس رايت هير ف ف ذيس از ان اوبشن ان سم كيسز طبعا اذا كان البيشنت اف ذا سيرجيكال اوبشن از نوت ان اوبشن والفي والبركوتينيوس اوبشن از نوت ان اوبشن اند ذا بيشنت از انستابل واحدة من الاوبشنز ان تحط في بيشنت تحط بيشنت في توتال ارتفيشال هارت يعني تدير ريبليسمنت كامل للقلب المريض ببمب زي هذه تسوي فيها توتال ارتفيشال هارت فور از ا بريدج فور كارديك ترانسبلانتيشن بالنسبه للميكانيكال سبورت اتس بيوند ذا سكوب اوف ذس ديسكشن لكن ان جنرال يعني تقدر تستخدم مالتيبل موداليتيز اوف اوف ميكانيكال سبورت البالون بامب مشكلتها بروفايدز مينيمال سبورت نوت ا لوت اوف سبورت بالنسبه للاكمو مشكلتها الاكمو انه لو اف يوزد الون اف نوت يوزد وذ امبالا يسمى اكبالا If used alone, it can flood the right ventricle and can cause more complications and can, can increase the afterload as well. So, so you need to be very careful choosing this type of support. <clears throat> Lacking, we, we do have studies that suggest that ECMO do, does improve surv survival in patients with uh, ventricular septal rupture. Hada, we're going into another case and a different topic. A 37-year-old patient, acute inferior MI, uh, CTO, LED, RCA, kind of culprit, yani who will be the STEMI, stats post PCI. Tlahdu fil sura hadi, had an apical four chamber view. Tlahdu and the myocardium is frail, or dissected, or hemorrhagic. Hada sar fi significant myocardial infarction here. وصار contained rupture هذا زي السودو انيوريزم علاش عرفنا السودو انيوريزم لان في discontinuity of the myocardium والpericardium بس قاعد شاد كل شيء فهذا يعني استنى ف... يعني patient this... when you see a patient like this patient is very lucky أن ما صلاش rupture but that outside of the hospital and those patients die ventricular free wall rupture true incidence متاعها unknown لان يعني معظم المرضى ما نشوفوش فيها The mortality is very high, reaches 100%. Uh, طبعاً, delayed reperfusion uh, one is one risk factor. Also, fibrinolytics versus PCI more common when you give fibrinolytics only. المرضى زي ما قلنا sudden death وممكن يجوك يعني vague, be vague symptoms. Pericarditis like chest pain, pain radiating to the back, borderline blood pressure. يعني you sh you should always keep this in mind. يعني أنت ممكن تشوف حالة ولا حالتين زي هذه. طول حياتك كطبيب لكن when you see it if you don't miss it you can make a huge favor to the patient. ال وعادة تصير مع anterior و lateral wall more commonly especially if it's massive. Treatment is emergent surgery لأن it can rupture at any time. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable and needs pericardial tamponade, you should be very careful doing pericardial synthesis. Because once you take blood out, you can have the tamponading effect on the blood. Any any person with bleeding should deal with hold pressure. The pericardial tamponade is holding pressure on this bleeding. If you take the blood out, the patient will exsanguinate. يعني هيخسر كل البلد اللي عنده هتقعد تطلع في البلد انت لغضو. بهاي. فالتريتم دي ستيك دي بيشنت بي اور. الفنتريكولور سودو انوريزم. هو هذا عبارة عن contained rupture. عادة يكون more common with the, with the inferior MI. Patients عادة تكون asymptomatic. ممكن تسمع murmur to and fro murmur. 
ويكون most distinctive effect اللي يفرق هذا بين next topic اللي هو الانوريزم انا neck of the aneurysm is less than 50% the diameter of the aneurysm itself والاي سي جي كان شو بيرسيستنت اس ايفيشن كان تذكروا في في الطب يعني هذا از كومن كويستشن يحبوه هل بالدكاتره في امتحانات بيشنت جات بي ام اي وتو جات بي بيرسيستنت اس ايفيشن واتس الديفرنشال دايجنوز هذا واحد من الديفرنشال دايجنوز هذا السودو انوريزم ال في جرام يو شود افويد تو دو ذات لانها ممكن تودي الى ثرومبس امبولايزيشن لكن هذا السودو انوريزم هذا اللفت فنتركل وهذا الانوريزم هنا وتشوف السمول نك Treatment is surgery to minimize a 30% chance of fracture. Uh, switching gears to ventricular aneurysm. Ventricular aneurysm, لو تقارنوه باللي شفناه بكري, هذا covered by all layers of myocardium. يعني myocardium موجود لكن scarred. هذا الفرق. والneck, شفت الneck wide. Neck is very wide. هذا كيف تفرق في الاكوكارديوغرام, في الMRI, في الCT, بين ventricular aneurysm و ventricular pseudo aneurysm. بالضبط. More common for anterior MI, عكس السودو أنوريزم inferior MI, وممكن يؤدي إلى LV dysfunction. وطبعاً الأنوريزم هذا يؤدي إلى heart failure لأن الجزء ذاك من الهارت بيخدمش. يؤدي إلى thrombus formation لأن فيه ال vircose triad. صح؟ ويؤدي إلى arrhythmia so systemic embolization. التريتمنت متاعهم you treat you treat what you're looking at. يعني لو thrombus بتعطيه anticoagulation, heart failure بتعطيه medications لل heart failure. وهكذا. لكن في بعض الحالات rarely إذا كان فيه refractory heart failure وفيه refractory arrhythmias ممكن تستحق للسرجري يسموه فيها aneurysectomy This is another case of an inferior MI 60 year old هذا another four chamber view هذا left right atrium هذا right ventricle right ventricle is dilated RV dysfunction RV function is reduced in a patient with inferior MI this is RV failure هذا diagnosis متاعك يكون RV failure في significant tricuspid regurgitation هذا وال وال PA pressure is elevated هذا tricuspid regurgitation jet right ventricular failure happens only in 10% of inferior MI patients و patients عادة يجوا ب high potential elevated JVD cosmal sine pulses paradoxes when you see this combination you should think about three things اللي هما ال RV failure والبومري امبوليزم وكارديك تامبوناد يعني ممكن يجوا بسيميلر برزنتيشن لكن في الرايت كلينيكال سيتنج ذس از موست لايكلي ار في فيلر ذا جود ثينج ابوت ار في فيلر ان ذي ار فيري جود تو ريكفر ذي ار فيري ذي بيكم فيري هاي بوتنسيال ذي كراش فيري كويكلي لكن ذي ريكفر فيري كويكلي از ويل اف يو اف يو دايجنوز ذيم ايرلي اند يو تريت ذيم اكوردينغلي علاش لان الاكسجين ريكويرمنت نتاع الار في از ماتش لوور ذان ذي ليفت فينتريكل وال coronary flow the right ventricle is both diastolic and systolic ف recovery أحسن بهالبا والحاجة تانية the collateralization لما ال لما ال RCA يصير occlusion the collateralization اللي حصل من left side أقوى بهالبا من العكس أقوى من لما لو يصير left side occlusion فعادة يومين ثلاثة أيام البيشن يتحسن ال RV failure treatment IV fluids Another typical question, yeah, if the boards, IV fluids. Give them IV fluids, inotropes. If the kind of patient needs pacing, you can give pacing. If inferior MI, caution with anything that affects preload. Read back, I'm going to give you nitrates, I'm going to give you sedation, I'm going to give you anesthesia, I'm going to give you read back, I'm going to have an RV failure patient. So be careful with morphine, with pain medications, with the P pressure, with the ventilator. Be careful with the high P pressure because this will increase the intrathoracic pressure and reduce the preload. فلازم تكون راد بالك من الحاجات هذه وال بعض لو لو استحقيت بريسرز ون اوف ذا جود بريسرز تو يوز ان بيشنتس وذ ار فيلر از فيزو بريسن لانه ما هوش سترونج فيزو كونستريكتور اون ذا بومري سيركيوليشن لكن سترونج اون ذا سيستميك سيركيوليشن طبعا الميكانيكال سبورت لو اوبشنز اللي عندك اللي هو الار بي امبلا اللي هي الرايت سايد اوف ذا امبلا تخش من الفيمورال فين وتحط الديفايس هنا ذات باي باسس ذا رايت فينتريكل في التاندم ارفاد وفي البروتاك دوو والفي اكمو از انذر اوبشن ان شاء الله مره ثانيه نتكلم عليهم هذا اني بيشنت لكن سبيشالي ذوز فيري كريتيكلي ال سيك بيشنتس اللي هو التيم وورك لازم يكون في يعني كولابوريشن وجود كوميونيكيشن بين ايفري بودي انفولفد فيزيشنز نيرسز تكنيشنز انكسيلري ستاف كلهم 
لازم في جميع التخصصات الكارديك سيرجنز والكارديولوجيست والاي ار والانتنسيفست دي هاف تو سيت داون اند ديسكاس فيربالي نوت نوت باي رايتنج نوتس تو ايتش اذر اور رايتنج تكست مسجز يقعدوا مع بعض ويقول فاميلي طبعا فاميلي هاف تو هاف تو بي انفولف لان ذوز بيشنتس يعني ا لوت اوف تايمز وي فوكس اون دوينج ايفريثينج فور ذيم لكن All they need is a, is a goal of care discussion with the family. And as I'm saying, a lot of those patients die. 50 to 70% of those patients, no matter what you do, they die. You have mechanical support, you have ECMO. And if you have a problem, you say, oh, we don't have mechanical support. I said, I'm in America, we have mechanical support, and they still die. Fifth, uh, still a big percentage of them, they still die. But, يعني, inshallah, يعني, in the future, يعني, يعني, with time, with the advanced, advances in medicine, this could change. Ooh, especially with the implementation of system changes. How about the references that I used? You can, you can use those. Thank you so much. Thank you. ديسكشن كويس والفاملي احنا شويه لاكك اللي حاطه في الكوميونيكيشن مع الفاملي هم صعب انه يفهموا بعض منهم لازم يتعود لهم لكن ان هاف تو سبيك تو ذا فاميلي و تول ذيم ذا رياليتي انا عاده نقول لهم ما بيش اخوفكم لكن هذه الرياليتي يو هاف تو اندرستاند فهم يتقبلوها يعني يجونا احنا حالات بعد توفى المريض بعد توفى يجوا يشكروا فينا يقولنا اه وي ديد جريت جوب احنا سوري تابل ديو مش عارف ايش We did our part, like, and the reality. Medicine has limitations. We are not gods. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give shifa. We just take the reasons and we do our best. So this message is for a new generation. You have to keep it in mind that the communication skills must be high. And one of the most important things in medical field. The important message that we're not really doing enough for our patients in the field. I think the number of cases. With a PCI or surgery is very important. Dr. Mohammed Gab, we have to know what's going on. We have to more and more resources. We have to have a medical field. We have to have a government. I hope the society will be more vocal. They've been very quiet, I think, in many ways. It's time for us to speak. Uh, loud Indeed. in patients' favor. Uh, exactly. It's our ethical responsibility to make sure that the governments know that whatever is available is not enough. Something has to be done. It has to be. As I said, this is honestly shameful. When you see in Libya, very low, the curves are very high. Exactly. In Libya, we have good, good resources or good expert people who can do this work. <coughs> We can invite other, uh, there are lots of people, living colleagues, they, are, they want to come, they want to work yes. and help. Inshallah, inshallah, yeah, yeah. alhamdulillah, there is a lot of good things. I mean, I can work outside, and in the past years, I can see that there is a clear improvement. Still, mm -hmm. step by step, but inshallah, with the time, with the Kathif, inshallah, the people are good. Inshallah, like Dr. Rida, inshallah, I mean, 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 I almost stopped my cardiac surgery service here because the, mm -hmm. uh, ICU care is very strange for Libya. Oh. Like they get ICU doctors who work within a rotor. And you, your registrar or ICU staff will receive your patient now. He will never see the patient again. He, as, at the end of the evening shift, he will be mm -hmm. in a different hospital, government or private, for a number of weeks or days. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a new no, guy every time. Continuity. Yeah. Continuity. Yeah. And the um, expertise really needs to be built. I think. Um, Uh, Amar Mugus stay the night with the patient in ICU. But it's difficult for you to work as in the day, all day as a surgeon and spend the night to be an intensivist. I can't stop. It's very, very difficult. Even your judgment can, can be, uh, mm -hmm. can be uh, clouded as well. But uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that next year we'll have a better. Mm -hmm.